Okay, it's on. All right, so first thing you'll notice is that I have a bunch of windows open here. Um, so normally this, this could kind of be overwhelming, but Lion has a new built-in feature called Mission Control that actually allows you to get a bird's eye view of all of your open windows. Um, I got to this screen by a three finger swipe up on the trackpad. Um, alternatively, you can click on it down in the dock here. Um, so this is everything that you have open, um, and it should show it shows multiple windows as well. Um, so if you click on one of these, it'll open with that window as the front facing window that you see. Um, I'm going to three finger swipe up to go back into it. The other thing that you'll notice is if you take one of your open windows, you can actually drag it onto a new desktop up at the top using the plus. So that'll create a new desktop. This is kind of like spaces if you guys were familiar with that. Um, so I'm just going to drag a couple of these out of my way here. So now we have multiple desktops and less clutter on each desktop. Um, so I'm going to go desktop number two with my iCal. Um, we'll come back to mission control again in another minute or two. But for now, you'll notice that there's a set of arrows at the top right corner of iCal. You'll also find this on other programs such as iTunes, um, the App Store, um, most of the native OS X uh, programs will contain the full screen mode. So if you click on that, everything else goes away and you're presented with a full screen view of all of your favorite information. You can easily exit out at any time by mousing up to the right corner, top right corner, and clicking on that same arrow set. Um, so now we're back to desktop two. Um, I'm actually going to go back into full screen mode. Um, to fully demonstrate this feature. So now, if you take three fingers and swipe to the left or the right, you'll have access to those other desktops that we just created. So I'm going to three finger swipe to the right, and it looks like I put Safari in that desktop. Um, Safari also has full screen mode, so I'm going to go ahead and load that up. If I three finger swipe over again, I have my iTunes, and iTunes off the page, but it also has a full screen mode. Um, so you can open up multiple desktops. You have very easy access to all of them through a three finger swipe motion to the left or the right. Um, it's very easy to use and very convenient. Um, you can have three finger swipe up and we can see all my different desk or all my different uh, desktops. And you'll notice that when you open up a program in full screen mode, that's basically its own desktop. Um, so we can go ahead and close out on the non-used desktops. So that's mission control. Um, I'm going to take us back into Safari to go through a feature that is not just specific to Lion. It's actually been around um, probably since OS 10 came out. Um, it's known as Safari Reader. So if we take any random article here, um, just select this one, you'll notice that as soon as it loads, there's a Reader button that appears in your address bar. And if you click on Reader, it actually brings it up, removes all the ads, it makes the text size a lot bigger, um, it's very easy to see and scroll through, and if you mouse down towards the bottom of the screen, you'll have options to increase the text size, decrease the text size, easy access to an email button, and you can actually print exactly what you see here with just the text. So you no longer have to wait through all the ads and go through multiple pages and all of that stuff. You get the whole story right here in Safari Reader mode. Mark, did you say that that reader is available for the operating system right now, the Snow Leopard? Yes, it is available for Snow Leopard as well. And does it pop up in the bar like that? Yes. Okay. Um, so that is Safari Reader. Um, 
one of my next features I'll go through is um, Launchpad. This is a new feature in Lion. Um, it provides very easy access to all of your applications. Um, you can either click on it in the dock or a four finger pinch motion. Four fingers pinching in um, will bring up all of your applications. You can then scroll through them. Um, I, I have multiple pages, I guess, on here. So if you use two fingers and swipe to the left or the right, you'll actually be able to see your second page of apps. And basically, you'll recognize this because if you have an iPhone or an iPad, um, you should already be familiar with the way that apps are laid out on your iPhone or iPad. Um, with Lion, Apple's trying to bridge the gap between mobile and, uh, I guess, laptops and desktops. So they've created a uh, launch pad to make it, to uh, help you make the switch. So these are all my apps. Um, to get out, I would just four finger swipe out, or again, you can click on the dock icon. And that is the launch pad. Um, I'm going to go through versions with you quickly. Um, you'll notice that the window that I just had open was actually a completely different desktop, but as I clicked on the icon in the dock, all of these are still open, but they're in their own respective windows. But if you click on one of them, it'll automatically bring you back to that window, regardless of where it is in Mission Control. So I'm going to go back to text edit real quick here. And you'll see that I have an untitled document that I've saved. Um, it's currently locked, so I'm going to unlock it. Um, so now I'm going to save it. I'm going to actually add a little bit of new text to it. So this is now a new version, as it's called. Now if you mouse up to the top right corner of the title, you'll see that an arrow appears. And if you click on that, you can either lock, duplicate, or you can browse all versions of your document. If you click on that, it brings up a very similar experience to the Time Machine experience. Um, you have all your past iterations of the document that you can click through. Um, I guess this one really hasn't changed much today, um, but if we go back to, well, I guess I haven't really edited it in the past. Um, so we have a couple different versions of it here, but you get the gist that you can see all of your edits, and if you accidentally made a mistake, you can easily go back and restore one, restore a previous one. So I'm going to go back to two lines of text, and that is what our document looks like now. Um, that is a feature that is only in line, and that's called with the versions. Mark, uh, sure. uh, so if you revert to a previous version, will it delete the most current? I'm not 100% sure, but we can find out. So it looks like it did not delete that version. You know, um, I've taken some writing classes recently where professors recommend never deleting any draft, in, especially with creative writing, because you can actually mess up <laughs> a draft. So this is really interesting. Is this what it was planned to promote, the, the use of Macintosh, or, or this version for creative writers, or what, what do you think was the reason behind adding this? Apple's always been a major player in the education market, so I can imagine this is probably one of their most marketable features towards students. Um, I think it's only for uh, Apple created products, so unfortunately Microsoft Office is not compliant with that yet, um, but if you use Pages, that also has the versions feature. Um, or text edit as we're working on, or what we're working on right now. Um, it looks like, I didn't even know this, but it looks like you can actually, when you're viewing your previous versions, it looks like you can actually edit them in real time. And just if you wanted to go back and grab something instead of completely reverting, it looks like that's an option as well. So now we have that document. Um, and actually, there's another new feature in line that's called Restore. And if we close out right now, 
this document, this first document that I have here is actually a saved document, but these other two have not been saved yet at all. Um, despite not being saved, if I quit out right now and go back into it, they both pop up, or all three of them pop up. Um, that includes the two that I hadn't even saved yet. Um, I, I guess that's actually called autosave. Um, so those were either autosave or restore. Either way, um, your documents came back. Um, so if you're, I mean, with my computer, I, I just like to keep a lot of notes handy. I don't always want to save them anywhere, because um, I'll usually just have them temporarily. So this is just a great way of jotting down some quick notes. You don't have to worry about saving it. And uh, you can just, they'll pop up every time that you open the program. That feature was uh, autosave slash restore. Um, I'm going to go through a quick um, airdrop procedure um, for that. I'm going to have my sister help me out. Um, all Lion Macs have a feature on the side that's called airdrop if you open up a new finder window. And that actually scans all computers on the network and finds anyone else that has airdrop open. On the network? Um, on your network. Um, I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if it can just use a wireless to communicate between MacBooks if you're not on a network. Um, but I know for a fact that it does work through the network. So you'll see that my sister's MacBook has now appeared here. Um, and to send a file to her, all I have to do is take it out of or just drag it and drop it onto her MacBook. It'll ask me if I actually want to send it to her. I press send. She'll have a similar screen pop up that says, do you want to accept this file from blank's computer? And then it will go right through. So it just sent that small text file right to her. Um, this can be useful in class settings. Um, if you just want to share your notes with somebody or, uh, I mean, it's it's a lot better than using a flash drive, too, depending on your network. Um, you can transfer files quite quickly without ever having to use a flash drive or Bluetooth or any of that stuff. So now Molly's trying to send me a PowerPoint. I can decline it, I can save it, or I can save it and open it. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. So now that file is, looks like it went to my downloads. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of uh, AirDrop. And it will automatically remove my computer from AirDrop for other users. Um, another great feature of Lion, which may also be present in uh, Snow Leopard at least, is the quick preview feature. So you'll notice that this is a PDF file. It has arrows. So you can actually get a very small quick preview by pressing the arrows. You can flip through the pages just to get a good sense of what document you're looking at. You can also go ahead and press the space bar and it'll open it up in what's actually known as uh, a quick preview. And if you'd like to open it further, you have the option of going to regular preview. Um, you can also take the quick preview and open it up full screen. Uh, this is not just in Finder, though. You'll also be able to use this in uh, other programs. So if I'm trying to, I guess mail is not going to let me open files, but if I want to create a new email, I pick up some, uh, send it to John Appleseed. Um, and if I'm going to attach a file, I have my list of files here. Obviously, you can't really see what's in each file. So if you had multiple versions of something or you slightly named them differently, um, you can actually still go ahead and press the space bar. And you can get a live preview. Even videos will work through this. So that you're attaching a file, you wanted to make sure what it was before you attach it. You just hit the space bar and it pops up and uh, you get a quick look at it and you know exactly what you're sending. And 
that is what's known as quick preview. And how do you catch that again? Um, anytime you have a list of files, you just hit the space bar. The space bar. Or I guess if you're just looking at the document um, in Finder, you also have the option of just like flipping through. Or uh, I guess if I have a video, you can also just hit the play button. You can't really see anything there, but if you hit the space bar, you get the actual size. You've mentioned some things like the three finger swipe or the four finger pinch. Is there some kind of guide that tells you all the sign language of? Yes, actually, um, system preferences is great for that. Um, if you go under the trackpad, um, it actually has video demos of each um, different multi-touch gesture. Um, so uh, scrolling direction, the natural scroll direction is another new feature of Lion. Um, on your smartphone, a lot of times you'll be loading a web page and your natural instinct is to pull down to make the page go down. Lion does the same thing. So if I scroll down, if I want to, sorry, I said that backwards. If I, if I uh, scroll down with two fingers, that's actually going to make it go up. Or it physically pulls the page down. But if I want to go down further, then I scroll up. So it's like you're interacting with a touch screen type thing where if you want something to go down, you're going to flick or push upwards on it. So Lion has that enabled by default. Um, some people just aren't ready to make that switch yet, so they do give you the option to turn it off. Um, so there's also the zoom feature. Um, if I'm looking at, let me find a picture here. So here's a picture. If I open that up in preview, um, I can actually zoom in or zoom out using a two finger pinch motion. You can do that with one hand or two hands. Um, you can also, if you put two fingers on and rotate them, you can actually rotate the picture using that. Um, I don't recall what else you can do with it off the top of my head. Um, Smart Zoom is another feature taken from the iPhone. So if you're on a text-heavy web page, um, where did my New York Times window go? There we go. So if we go back to our article from before, or a different article in this case, if you simply two finger tap, it should actually zoom in. So two finger tap, it's just like the iPhone, um, it zooms in on the text for you, or if there's a picture, we're already pretty zoomed in. So I'll zoom back out, and now if I two finger tap on it, it zooms in and fits it to the screen. You really can see how they're trying to make the consistency of every device because this reminds me so much of the iPhone and the yeah. iPad and now they have the operating system that you'll be using. They, they really want you to use the trackpad obviously. Yeah, they actually, um, for desktops they have the Magic trackpad which is a larger version of uh, a laptop trackpad. Um, I believe those have been pretty successful. I think um, John has one of those. Yeah, doesn't John he? does okay. have one. Um, so that allows you to use the gestures with your iMac. Um, they also have the Magic Mouse, which accepts a lot of gestures as well okay. over the surface of that. That was my next question. Do you think mice or the mouse is just going to go off by the wayside? It's very possible. Um, I guess everything is mobile today, and. Uh, the iPad market is probably going to surpass the laptops pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, John got a new iPad. I, I saw that. Oh, you today. did? Okay. Yeah. He got the new one? The new one. Yeah. yeah. So these are some more of the gestures. Mission control is swipe up with three fingers. 
Um, of course, you can always change these. Um, there are a couple options for most of them. Um, so swiping between full screen apps or your desktops, three finger swipe left or right. Um, when you're browsing on the internet or looking at pictures, you can two finger swipe to the left or the right uh, to flip through. I guess textbooks work as well or ebooks. Um, launch pad is a four finger pinch, I guess pinching with your thumb and three fingers. And then also uh, spreading outward will give you your desktop. Um, so those are some of the great multi-touch gestures. Let me see what else was on my list here. Um, Spotlight has actually had uh, some great capabilities um, since OS X as well. Um, if you actually, you can type in math equations, so 9 times 9, and it will calculate for you using the calculator app. Um, it's actually just as convenient as using the calculator app. Um, it also does division, addition, so it's, it's basically using the calculator for you without you ever having to open it. Another great feature is definitions. Um, so if we're looking up, if we want a definition of something, I guess drive probably isn't the best option. Um, shout out a word to English majors. Intense. So right here we have a uh, look up option. So this gives you a quick preview. It's already looked up the definition in the built-in dictionary and uh, gives you the complete definition of it. It also gives you quick access to a web search for it. And it has also searched inside of our files for the word intense. Um, let's see, I'm going to search for Sydney. Um, you'll notice that it grabs not only a contact, but it also grabs email messages. So it's actually grabbed email messages that have content related to Sydney. It also has calendar events. Sydney's listed in there. And I'm going to assume that these pictures were taken by Sydney or have some relation to Sydney as well. It has a dictionary. Does it have a thesaurus too? Um, I believe. Well, I guess it looked up Sydney for us too. So if you oh, open up, thesaurus, yeah. yeah, if you open up dictionary, it has this thesaurus. Obviously, no entries for Sydney. Um, let's put in intense again. So we have a couple different versions. Is um, this just in Lion? The the. Um, no, this has been around for a while. It has it. Yeah. Calculator two, calculator app. Yeah, those are all. Uh, general features of Spotlight. Um, let's see. So I, it looks like I've gone through most of what I had outlined for myself. Um, so you can actually download mine through the Mac App Store. Um, it's got its own little category right here. And uh, I believe it's only $30, and uh, you would just download it, and then it will install itself right over Snow Leopard. Um, How long has it been out? It came out this summer. And any bugs or glitches that you know of? I have not heard of any glitches. Um, the only thing I know of is the Washu Maru routers don't seem to play too nicely. Um, but that's definitely on Maru's end and yeah. not Apple's. Yeah. Um, so that's that. And then I promised a short preview of Mountain Lion, which will be coming out this summer. Um, and for that, Apple actually has a video on it. When's it going to come out? Sometime mid-summer, I'm guessing. Do you think they'll support upgrades from Snow Leopard? Um, judging by their past, I'm going to say no. So here's our video. Let me see if I can hook up the sound. So with 
mountain lion, they're going even further on the uh, integration between mobile devices and your laptops and desktops. With OS X Lion, we brought some of the fundamental elements of the iPad experience to the Mac. This summer, less than a year later, we're taking that experience even further with OS X Mountain Lion. The next release of the world's most advanced desktop operating system. By bringing some of the most popular features from iPad and iPhone to Mountain Lion, we're making the Mac better than ever. Here's a sneak peek at some of the new features you'll be seeing in Mountain Lion. iMessage has been a huge hit on iPhone and iPad, and Mountain Lion brings it to the Mac with messages. It lets you send free, unlimited messages from your Mac to anyone on an iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, or on another Mac. You can also send and receive contacts, photos, and even HD video. With messages, you can start a conversation on your Mac and pick it up on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Reminders is the best way to do to-dos on your iPhone and iPad. And now it's part of Mountain Lion too. Reminders make it easy to create any type of list and organize tasks into custom lists. And thanks to iCloud, all your reminders are pushed to all your devices automatically. So no matter where you go, your reminders go with you. The Notes app makes it easy to jot down thoughts on iPhone and iPad. With Mountain Lion, it's just as easy on a Mac. Create a note, add photos, movies, and links. Notes lets you add bullet points, formatted lists, and rich text. You can even tear them out and pin them on your desktop. And since iCloud syncs your notes, all your notes are available on all your devices, automatically. Notification Center makes it easy to keep up with the notifications on your iPad and iPhone. And now with Mountain Lion, the Mac gets a unified Notification Center too. Notification Center gives you an elegant way to keep track of the new stuff that pops up on your Mac. New emails, messages, calendar events, reminders, system updates, and even notifications from third-party apps. New notifications appear in the same place on your desktop, then go away. If you want to see more, just click on a notification, or use this simple swipe from anywhere on your Mac, and the desktop slides away to reveal Notification Center. iPhone and iPad let you share photos, links, and more with a tap. With Mountain Lion, it's just as easy to share on a Mac, and you can do it without ever leaving an app. iPhone and iPad let you share photos, links, and more with a tap. With Mountain Lion, it's just as easy to share on a Mac, and you can do it without ever leaving an app. Just look for the Share button found throughout the apps in Mountain Lion. Click it, and you'll see sharing options that are tailored for the app you're using. You can post to sites like Twitter, Vimeo, and Flickr, and share links, photos, videos, and documents using mail, messages, or AirDrop. Game Center expanded the world of social gaming by connecting millions of users on iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Now, Game Center is coming to the Mac, so you can play head-to-head -head and turn-based games between your Mac and an iOS device. Game Center shows you the games your friends are playing and recommends new games you might like. Challenge your friends to a game or connect with Game Center members anywhere around the world. And when you finish playing, you can check out the leaderboards to see how your scores rank and score some bragging rights. AirPlay Mirroring lets you wirelessly share whatever's on the screen of your iPad 2 and iPhone 4S to your HDTV using your Apple TV. Now with Mountain Lion, you can do the same thing from your Mac. Stream presentations, videos, web pages, spreadsheets, and more without ever plugging in a single cable. Thanks to AirPlay Mirroring, it's never been easier to share what's on your Mac, everywhere from the conference room to the living room. So that's a sneak peek at Mountain Lion, the next release of the world's most advanced desktop operating system. By bringing some of the most popular features from iPad and iPhone, we're taking the Mac experience to a whole new level.
that's not mine. Um, so I guess there are more detailed features and screenshots on the website as well. Sometimes it's summary. Yep. I think the price will be comparable to what mine uh, is. I imagine it will probably be about the same. I guess Mac is getting security for the first time a little bit too. Not necessarily in the traditional sense, but just a little more secure. What do you think the most useful feature in Lion and maybe Mountain Lion too will be for students here? Or will it depend on their area of study? Um, I guess it depends what they use their computer for. Um, I've found the, the versions and uh, the auto saving to be really helpful. Um, with uh, Microsoft Office, actually, um, the 2011 version and Lion, um, it will actually keep your files open for you through that as well. So I, I use Word for my, uh, for my classes and taking notes, and I just keep open um, my Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes and my Tuesday, Thursday, and then I never have to find them or do any of that stuff. I just open it up and it's right there waiting for me. Um, another great feature is um, the Safari Reader. Um, that comes in handy when you're professors assign you an article to read and you don't want to you don't have to read it on the screen you can easily print out just the text or if you do want to read it on the screen you obviously don't want to have to wade through all the ads and multiple pages so that's been really helpful as well do you have any questions Dennis what is icloud sync um iCloud pretty much syncs all the important stuff. I don't have my account logged in here. And it's how much? iCloud is free. It's completely free. Uh, oh, I think we got the iTunes match. Oh, yeah. iTunes match, I think, is 25 a month. iCloud will sync your iTunes. Um, if you use iTunes Match, it'll grab even the songs that um, you didn't actually buy through iTunes, um, and it will upload those to iCloud. It'll only upload the ones that you that are not available through iTunes, so that it saves your space. Um, so you can use contacts, calendars, bookmarks. It also syncs through Find My Mac. Um, photo stream, you can upload your photos from your iPhone or iPad directly to that and then you can also grab them through photo stream on your Mac. Um, Back to my Mac actually allows you to, I believe, control your Mac or at least grab some files off of it from a mobile device such as the iPhone or iPad. Um, and then I guess in Mountain Lion it will have some additional syncing features. And everyone gets five years? Uh, yes. If you were a MobileMe subscriber, I think you get an additional 20. Okay. 